We are now joined by a very special guest. He is the number one overall offensive lineman in the class of 2021 and Notre Dame commit Rocco Spindler. Rocco, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm doing awesome, guys. How are you guys? <laughs> uh, it's great to have you on. Thanks for coming Absolutely on. Absolutely doing well. Uh, so for just like those of you who don't know, Rocco's full name is Rocco Seth Kodiak Spindler, which I have to say right now, like that's the coolest name I've ever heard. <laughs> All time football guy name. Do you ever just like sit back and think about it and then just say it out loud? And then you're just like, you go to your parents and thank them for naming you that. Cause that's so cool. Like I said that and I got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess sometimes, you know, my, my favorite part of like the whole thing is Kodiak because Kodiak, yeah. Um, if you search up what Kodiak bear is, it's like the toughest, biggest, you know, baddest, uh, you know, bear alive. So I kind of like, Hey man, that's kind of me. I'm an offensive lineman. I'm all guys. <laughs> that's kind of my thing. So I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's pretty sick name. Absolutely. Yeah. Kodiak just sounds like such an, I know you're a big outdoors guy. That's just such an outdoors yeah. guy name too. Mm -hmm. If I was on the D line lining up against someone whose middle name was Kodiak, I'd be, I'd be, I would be scared. terrified. <laughs> so Speaking of thanking your parents for that name, your dad obviously played for the Lions, and Matt here is a diehard Bears fan. So can you just, like, rub it in one more time after that brutal loss last weekend? Hey, man, it's the Lions. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> but, you, know, you know, being a Lions fan, you know, has ups and downs, a lot of downs, but hey. <laughs> so what is your favorite food? Favorite food? I'm a sushi guy. Okay, so you're so, not a real offensive lineman. Yeah, you don't like because you would have said pancakes. Oh, dude, <laughs> <laughs> that's just like a dessert. Like I'm past that now. Oh, yeah, is it like, a dessert? Like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I feel like if you're an offensive lineman, though, you kind of have to have pancakes on the mind at all times. Dude, pancakes. It's it happens so much now that I don't even think about it. Ah, uh, I like that answer. Yeah. That's a good answer. I mean, that's clear too because uh, I noticed that you won Hog of the Year. Which okay, who came up with that name? Awesome. That, that's the awesome. That's the craziest, most awesome O line name award name ever. Can we lose him again? Might have just cut out. It's power of editing. One, two. No, way. I just heard him talk real quick. So probably just cutting out. I mean, he's okay. Hey, sorry, you cut out for it. Yeah, you cut out for a second. That's on us. All right, you guys left off at the hog. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll re. I'll re ask that. Yeah, no, I, I got it. Um, okay. my, uh, my offensive line coach came up with it like years ago. And then, uh, you know, when I came up as a freshman, I heard, yo, the hog award and went to one of the seniors. I was like, man, that's pretty cool. And then from there on, I won that award, you know, three times in a row. It was awesome. So, three time hog of the year. So do you just go by hog now? Like, is that your nickname? You just go by hog? Uh, People just call you hog? That's not me. People just call me, you know, Rocco or Rock or Rocky. You know, that's really about me. Okay. All I mean, right. you have a pretty illustrious career and list of achievements, but I think three-time hog of the year might be the best. Yeah, that is. That's up there. That might be the end of <laughs> It might be, but uh, I think my my one I'm trying to win right now, uh, it's called the Anvil Award. You guys hear about that? Yeah, I saw yeah. you were uh, promoting that on your Twitter. Yeah, it's it's that's a tough award. You know, no offense lineman has ever won, uh, won it. It's between offense, defense, and linebackers, like the three trench players, I guess. I don't know about yeah. linebackers, not trench players. It's – it's mind boggling, but uh, <laughs> it's it, so it's I think three times now it's it's pretty it's a new award. Uh, only three uh linebackers have won it now, so no offense lineman, no defense lineman. So I'm trying to become the first one, and right now in the running, it looks like I'm you know I, I got a good shot at it. I think it's pretty disrespectful to not at Dude, this I, point. I, I want to win just because I want to be an offensive lineman, just to see the offensive lineman win something exactly. It's like, when I does put the, some respect on their name? Yeah, when does the right. award uh get given? Because we'll promote the um, hell out of it on our Twitter. Yeah, we everything will. we got. I believe, I believe January. 2nd. Oh yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're, we're gonna promote you like crazy. One Don't asterisk: uh, if you do win the Anvil Award, we want credit for getting you the award. That's all. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll come back on with the trophy. Perfect. Awesome. You will you will be back. That's on. actually a great segue too, because when you do come on the show, you're a friend of the program, so we we'll give you a 72 hour notice. But uh, whenever we ask, you do have to come on. Yes. So. Right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, so you or we mentioned that you're a big outdoors guy. I noticed you said you have rams behind you. Do you yeah. hunt yep. rams? Uh, no, my parents did that uh, probably 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but no, I'm mostly a whitetail, you know, fanatic guy. I, I love deer hunting. Gotcha. Okay. And then kind of going off that. So uh, I saw a tweet from June 19th, 2020. Okay. So has four pictures of you posing like you're like a calendar model. 
and the caption is she thinks my tractor's sexy. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, have you, you got, got have you gotten any calls about being like having your own calendar? Like we'll buy one. We will That's absolutely buy one. And I, I I want to be like on a, like a DXL like a yeah, exactly. That's what we're saying. <laughs> New Balance, Carhut, Bass Pro, Cabela's. Like, come on, like, start calling or something. Yeah, the fact that Cabela's hasn't hit you up to have a full-on Rocco Spindler spread on a calendar. It's preposterous. That is kind of appalling. You could pull that off. Trust, I. you could definitely pull that off. I, I'm thinking about that, man. I, that's what I want to get into. You know, I, Absolutely. <laughs> give me the gear. I'll model it for you and win-win. Exactly. Yeah, ditch football and go into modeling. Exactly. <laughs> but so your high school team wore like the Michigan Wolverine stripes on your helmets. Uh, did you ever ask your coach if maybe you could get like some shiny gold ones? Listen, uh, it's I kind of he asked me if we wanted to change the the helmets and uniforms, and I was like, listen, I've been playing. Oh, my cat is on the leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you don't tag me as a cat guy. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see you as a big I, cat I, I, I'm thinking like a cat. golden retriever, like a big old dog. A hunting dog, yeah. I, trust me, I want that too. <laughs> uh, but no, so my coach asked me multiple times, uh, hey, you want to change the helmets? And I'm like, man, you know, having a cool different helmet would look sick. And then I was like, hey, this has been tradition for, you know, almost 100 years here at Clarkston with this winged helmet. I was like, I don't want to be that guy to change the tradition. I was That's like, fair. I deal with it. Yeah. yeah, tradition's big. So yeah. speaking of Michigan, too, obviously your top five was Ohio State, Notre Dame, LSU, Michigan, and Penn State. And after seeing Penn State and Michigan kind of become absolute dumpster fires this year, do you ever wake up in like a cold sweat knowing that you could have gone to two schools that have a combined four wins in a pretty weak conference? <laughs> um, you know, I know Michigan treated me well, you know, very yeah. well with everything. Um, Penn State as well. Um, you know, there's a reason you ended up at uh at Notre, Notre Dame. I, I understand that. Blue and it gold, was, baby. Blue and gold. Listen, you know, I, I can't trash them too much. Um, you know, <laughs> record is is bad for them. But, you know, for me, football was actually the last thing, you know, on my mind where I was going to go to school. You know, I believe, you know, if you're the best player, you know, on that team or, you know, you're developed as one of the best offensive linemen in, in college football, no doubt you can get to the NFL. Um, so I, I just kind of moved football, you know, at the end of my list and focused on other things like academics, um, you know, development, um, you know, the school itself, um, the networking um, between the alumni and, you know, all those schools had it. So I kind of didn't look at records and stuff until now where I'm like, wow, it's, ooh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, so it's sounding like you knew you were going to go play division one football. So that you just didn't have to worry about it. You were just that yep. good that you just knew. I, I, I knew probably my sophomore year, I was like, I, I got a good shot at this. Um, but, you know, I just continue to, you know, grind in the weight room and, you know, in the classroom as well. And I just let football take care of itself. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. So our producer, Eric off camera has a question about recruiting. Yeah. I'm actually curious. So um, have you talked to four-star running back Donovan Edwards at all? Dude, Donovan Edwards. Yes. He, <laughs> I, I play against him all the time. Um, he's a, uh, he's an awesome dude. I believe no doubt about it. He's top 10, if not top five, you know, in the, in the 2021 class. He is a legit prospect, and I don't think he gets enough credit because that man can do everything. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so similar, similar to you, he's um, a prospect for Michigan, obviously, and he's deciding between Notre Dame and Michigan. Have you talked to him at all about that? Or uh, Yeah, we've been trying to, you know, me and Blake Fish have been trying to, you know, work our ways with them. Um, you know, it's almost impossible to get him on the phone, and when you get him on the phone – you know, you got to give them every, you know, sales <laughs> motivation, try to get them to come to your team because you might not get them back on the phone for a yeah. while. Um, but no, you know, I told them, you know, just why, you know, I chose Notre Dame, my Blake did. And, you know, the best, you know, things why Notre Dame so special compared to the other schools. And, you know, he, you know, is going to do his best for him. And, you know, you got to respect it if he goes, you know, Michigan or us. And that can be you know, a big thing for us. But, hey, it's, it's whatever's best for him. Yeah, so uh, obviously he hasn't fully committed yet, but if he's told you anything, uh, if you could feel free to break it right now. <laughs> um, you can bleep no. it out if we have to. Yeah, we uh, actually unintentionally broke. I don't know if you know, follow Notre Dame basketball much. We had uh, J.R. Konezny, who's a commit from the local area. He accidentally broke a story about uh, one of his buddies committing to Notre Dame that we had at first. Yeah, so. we were the first to break it. So if that's, you want to tell us, we'll give you I, credit. Actually, I don't know really anything about that. <laughs> Um, okay, so he's lying. I, I believe it's I believe it's really between Notre Dame and Michigan, but hey, it's I want Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. I rise us and go to like a Georgia or an LSU. Yeah, but, okay. Um, so I, I think it's really between Michigan and Notre Dame, but who knows? Okay, yeah. so 
So like, this will actually air Wednesday. So we might know by then. So exactly. So yeah. yeah. Yep. Is the is the recruiting coordinator like is he so happy that you're pretty much just doing his job for him, <laughs> trying to get these guys to come to ND? Uh, I guess you know I'd say our recruiting coordinator is Blake Fisher, dude. He like <laughs> I'm trying to get this dude. I'm like, all right, Blake. The names don't work for me. I'm like, you got to say like what position? Where are you from? <laughs> I just don't know these guys off the top of my head. I'm like, I know like four recruits in the entire 2021 class. I'm one, you're one, and there's like two other guys. <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I don't even know half our guys on our team. I'm like, I'm trying to just learn these dudes like personally, and you're telling me, oh, we got to get this dude. I'm like, yeah, all right, some guy from like California. I'm like, Fine. yeah, definitely heard of him before, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So speaking of Donovan Edwards and running backs, uh, as someone whose job is it, or as someone whose job it is to protect your quarterback, do you sleep at night? You like sleep easier at night knowing how good Kyron Williams is at picking up uh, blitzes? Dude, he is a beast. I, yes, I watched he is. that Clemson game, and you know the offense linemen did their jobs, and you just got an extra man coming in, and he took him on and just blasted them. Yep. It's just it's great to see that running backs, you know, not afraid. Um, to make a huge block and yep. you know, it's not selfish to get you know he wants the ball 24 7 you know he participates on all levels and you know have a guy like that in the backfield is pretty special I think we should start making four Notre Dame players like an honorary hog of the year where you're not on the offensive line yes but you play yes. like one and I think Kyron is the inaugurary winner yeah, I think so too no no <laughs> question about it so speaking we kind of talked about Kodiak and uh, you being an outdoorsman, do you think that growing up in that like farm-like environment really contributed to the offensive linemen, just like scrappy, gritty nature that they all have? Oh, no question about it, man. You know, big farmer guy, you know, you know, picking up big, you know, 100-pound, 200-pound bags of corn, throwing them around. Uh, it's no different than me, me picking up a 200-pound defense alignment and throwing them around. So I would say so. But, you know, at Notre Dame, you know, what got me to commit there is, you know, these guys hang out all the time. They go fishing. They go hunting. You guys see – uh, Leon Eichenberg's, uh, yeah. I guess, like Instagram picture with all the deer and pheasants and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's why I really, you know, what sold me. So, like you said, they're a very tight knit group, that offensive line room. room. Uh, have you guys, like, and actually, the question we had was we saw Liam Eichenberg on the, at the Syracuse game. Some of the color commentary was talking about how he'll haze some of the younger guys and stuff like that. And I know you guys talked to Quentin Nelson a lot, but have you heard from any of the other big offensive linemen there just trying to haze you a little bit as you're coming in? Um, no, not really, actually. You know, they're a, they're a, they're a close group. Um, I don't believe there's too much of that, but, you know, pretty much senior freshman stuff, you're going to get a little bit of it. But, you know, those guys are respect, respectful, you know, to me. And, you know, I got the same with them as well. And, um, you know, really, I only talked to him a few times and, you know, he's a great dude. Yeah, Absolutely. being an offensive lineman, I talk to a lot of guys who are O-linemen. They, they like, describe it as the trenches. Like, I'm sure it is, like, extremely difficult. Like, can you, like, what what do you do before the game to, like, prepare yourself to go into the trenches and just say, this scrawny D-lineman is not going to get past me. I'm going to put him on his butt and protect my quarterback all game. Um, Like, do you listen to any music? Like, is it hard metal? Is it rock? I'm a classic rock, dude. AC. Okay, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, that, that's me. Um. You know, I go in the mindset that I'm the best player to ever play the game and True. I'm going to dominate this guy. And well, I mean, I mean you to- are. You're the number one O-lineman in the country. You're the hog so of the you year. Are. Yeah, yeah exactly. you are. Yeah, so I just go in that mindset that I'm going to try to kill this dude and no one's better than me and you have that mindset, you know, every single play. And, you know, you got to have a mentality that nobody else has and you have to dig deep down in those fourth quarters and or even – even, you know, overtime, you know, we had a couple overtime games this year and, you know, the survival of the fist, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. Do you like, do you feed? So, okay. We're, Compose we, yourself. Yeah. Uh, Compose <laughs> yourself. <laughs> um, so obviously with COVID and everything going on right now, it was really hard to feed off of energy that really wasn't in the building. So mm-hmm. how much did that affect your mindset in the game? If at all, you got to bring your own juice. Exactly. So like, you know, we had no fans this year or we had parents, but that was really about it. And, you know, the guy just got hyped up in the locker room um, and really just brought it all together. You know, in the off season, we, there was no team practices, no conditioning together. It was all, you know, lifting books at home. That's really what it was. Cause no, our, our weight rooms weren't open. Football guy. Yeah. So that's really well, all it was. Well, I got a, you know, I got a gym in my basement. So, but other guys on my team, you know, had nothing. So to really come out and, you know, take it to a team, you know, it's you had to want it more than the other team did. 
Exactly. So speaking of lifting, we have one question that we ask every guest. And usually it's just to stroke my own ego, knowing that I bench more than like certain professional athletes and stuff like that. But I don't even know if I even want to ask this. Rocco, what do you bench? Dude, I don't know. I don't know. Probably like 20 pounds. I don't know. I'm not. A- <laughs> okay, perfect. So I do bench more than Notre Dame offensive linemen. <laughs> no, you what are you actually putting up? Uh, I'll probably say 400 pounds. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yep. Okay. So now not only, so honest, it might be more honorary than hog of the year. You now have the best bench of an interviewee ever. And so, I think that's going to remain. Yeah. I guess. We, I, don't know. I haven't done it in a while. I might not even be there anymore. I might be. Uh, no, no, no. You do. You are. Yeah. You are. <laughs> you are. are you, were you repping that or was that your one? No, 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 no. I, to be honest, I think Blake Fisher's got a pretty serious bench. I think he reps like 400. We've mm-hmm. actually been talking to him. We're trying to get him to come on as well. So uh, Dude, you I, might lose your throne. I could call him right now and tell him to get out. <laughs> Go for yeah, it. Yeah, seriously, go do it. for it. Call him. Uh, I, listen, I don't know what he's going to say in that first, like, two seconds. Not there. <laughs> we, we, have the we have the power of editing. Of editing. <laughs> yeah, if dial you, him up. If you want I'll, to, I'll go for it. Him. I'll text him right now, but keep, <laughs> keep, asking, keep asking your questions. All right. <laughs> so a little bit of a serious question, and we don't mean to be too serious on here, but we saw in the uh, a big factor in your going into Notre Dame was that your grandpa, your late grandpa told, like, there was a story about that. Can you just go into a little bit more about that? Um, you know, my grandpa, you know, God rest his soul, man. He was an awesome dude. And, you know, when I was a young boy, he always wanted me to go to Notre Dame. You know, it, my dad's schools were between Syracuse, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan. He chose Pittsburgh. Uh, and Pitt, yeah. And um, he, he wanted my dad to go to Notre Dame, but didn't push him as much to go there until after the fact he went to pit. And then, you know, when he saw me developing, you know, as a, as a young man, he said, this kid's got something special up his sleeve. And, you know, they, he wanted me to go to Notre Dame. And I promised him when I was five years old, yeah, grandpa, I'll go to Notre Dame. Uh, not thinking I was ever going to play college football. And then, you know, as time went on, you know, probably my freshman year, he said, Hey, you, you got a good shot at this. And I said, yeah, grandpa, I'll go to Notre Dame. And then, um, you know, he got sick. And the last time I ever saw him, um, it was probably a year before my commitment. Uh, I, I went and saw him in the hospital and he was real sick. And um, I spent like probably a week with him. And then uh, like two days before he passed away, uh, I promised him I was going to go to Notre Dame. That's incredible. Um, That's so, goosebumps. Yeah, That's yeah. Like chills. <laughs> And, and, and in my mind, I didn't have that I was going to go there yet. You know, I kind of wanted just to tell him because I knew he wasn't going to be around to, you know, see my commitment. Yeah. And he was really looking forward to it. Um, but, you know, to tell him that, you know, just, you know, one last little thank you. And, you know, this is what I'm going to do for you. And, you know, he was really heartwhelmed. And, you know, he was, you know, he, he's tears in his eyes, man. You know, he was so excited. And I made sure I was like, Grandpa, I'm like, you know, a year before anybody else does. I'm like, you cannot <laughs> say anything. He's like, I got you. And then, uh, and then I was at football and I got the call that, you know, he passed away. And then um, uh, that was three days after. And then uh, a whole year now, um, August 8th, um, you know, when the time started to come in and, you know, everything, everything started to fall in with Notre Dame, you know, I truly felt that Notre Dame was the best for me. And, you know, to top it all off, I promised my grandpa to go there. And it was just, you know, everything fell in place. And, you know, I'm glad I did. Yes, yeah, thank an God amazing for, story. Thank God, five-year-old you, for promising Grim you're going to go to Notre Dame. That, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Uh, does anyone ever confuse you with Thor? <laughs> Thor. Uh, no, I usually get Hulk. Okay. Well, same thing. I, yeah, pretty much. But I was thinking, like, with your hair, I, you're Thor. I'm, you are now Thor. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> of course. So I saw you had an awesome commitment video. Grant Jashewski, Jashewski. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. <laughs> he does follow us on Instagram, by the way, at bootleg sports underscore. He seems like a cool guy, but uh, he did an plug. amazing job with it. How long did the commitment video take to do? Um. So he, so Matt Freeman, you know, he, he hired him and he said, Rocco, listen, I don't, this was like two months in advance before I was going to know where I was going to go. And he said, Rocco, he's like, if you want the best commitment video and you're going to go to Notre Dame, he's like, you got to hire this dude, Grant. He's and cool. I, you know, I, yeah, I, he's I, nasty listen, with I, it. I, I was like, who's Grant, man? I'm like, I've seen <laughs> all the good ones. Everybody's working out and everything, doing crazy things like that. 
and he's like, just take a couple, um, you know, seconds and check out a video of his. And I saw some cool things and it was like professional. I was like, man. And then when the time came, I was like, yep. And so Matt Freeman and him drove out to Michigan and they were like the first two to know. Uh, my parents didn't even know where I was going yet. So I, it was those two. And then they came out, uh, we shot the tractor scene and everything. Um, and then my football all on the same day, you know, they got here at 12 o'clock. We were at my cabin, um, you know, by one. And then after that, we waited until like six o'clock. So the sun was getting down and turned on my head. My coach turned on the lights on the stadium. That's so cool. And then, uh, and then two weeks later, I drove up to South Bend to shoot the rest of the video. So it was, a it was a pretty lengthy, you know, thing to do. Cause he yeah. had to edit it all. He had to do a sound over it was, it was, it was, it was definitely professionally done. How cool was that? Oh, dude, it, I had so much fun doing it. It was, it was a good time. And, um, you know, just to see how well it came out, I believe no question about it, it's the best commitment video of all time. Ever. That, it's ever. So, I, ever. I, so cool. And I'm strong. I, I, I've seen some good ones, but the way that he just had the camera angles, like yeah. this, this man was hanging from literally like you know like those car handle things yeah like, like he, he was hanging and his feet usually like doing like like a core workout you know, <laughs> thing, getting, like if you look at like the tires like yeah hanging outside the tractor it was nuts that's thing. insane that is yeah, really that's cool. commitment so yeah, it was commitment <laughs> <laughs> speaking of your high school and dimming the lights there i saw that you just recently got your jersey retired at your high school are you and then there, wasn't there one other person that got it in yeah, the same my, day yeah gotcha my, is that a common thing at your high school? Because I've never seen uh, that before. I haven't either nope, at a high nope. school. I believe maybe one other person has ever done it, and that was maybe 10 years ago or 20 okay. years ago. But other than that, um, you know, it's just me and him. And I don't even know if his jersey is still retired. I think it's just really me and Garrett's. And uh, Garrett's going to LSU. So oh, that's we're talking about. He, yeah. He's not some just high school kid. He's <laughs> a legit player. So was he on the O-line with you? Yep. If so, that oh, that's scary. How did your quarterback get sacked once? I think he got sacked twice this year, but it wasn't on the offensive line's fault. It was like he held the ball <laughs> clearly. Like no, seconds. clearly. And they and they brought like literally like twelve guys. I you can't bring twelve guys, but cover somehow. zero, <laughs> cover negative one. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of that, I'm sure you saw the uh, the Jets Raiders game. They ran that cover zero. Hey, As an O lineman, here we go. Blake's calling. Oh god. Okay, we'll postpone this question. Yeah. Dude, what's up, man? Dude, these podcasts, man, they said they said they want to get a hold of you, but you never answer. Is that true? <laughs> Dude, it's bootleg sports. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Uh, we well, shot you a DM. Dude, these guys are legit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, on Instagram. Uh, I'll have to check my DM and I'll get back to you guys. For sure. Yeah, I appreciate sure. it. Okay, so like the reason shit. the reason why we wanted to call you – is he still on? Yeah, he's still on. The reason why we wanted to call you is we wanted to ask how much you benched. Rocco was saying that you might bench more than him, so. Yeah, it's like 400 pounds. That's about what Rocco said. That's exactly said. what Rocco said. Can we get a specific number? We are going to get a bench in studio. You both are going to come down when you – are on Notre Dame's campus and we're going to max <laughs> like say 401. <laughs> All right. We'll say 401 and you are officially the best bench we've ever had on the, the show. Rocky, you got to step it up. Yeah. All right. Hey Blake. You guys. You're talking to you. Guys. You're talking All to right, you later, Blake. All right. <laughs> He's lame. <laughs> Too professional. Uh, yeah. All so. right. <laughs> So as I was saying, with that cover zero, you see like eight guys rushing the line. Do you would you have gotten scared in that, or do you just been like, okay, I'm going to take these three, my LSU teammate, exactly. take that's, you that's, three. That's exactly how it went. If you guys check out film, like I would take up two or three guys. He take up two. <laughs> that's how it was. And then his brother, he's got offers from like LSU, Michigan, Michigan State, and Arizona State, and so he was next to me. So I knew he can at least take one or two guys. Our center was like a really good high school football player. You know, he's a little small, so he didn't get like the big offers, but he could pick guys. And then the other guy was 6'5", 280. So like, I knew he could pick a guy. So it was, you know, we all had a good, you know, relationship and we all started, I started four years, Garrett started four years and the other guys two, three years. So we all had experience and, 
you know, how, how it would happen is if it just, he would either roll out and a safety would come down, but it's not our job anymore. Um, but yeah, I think we only gave up one or two sacks, but it wasn't because of the offense line. It was just because of miscommunication with the running back or um, because of you know, the quarterback held the ball on too long. That's boys against men. Yep. Like, that's exactly. not even fair. So you're obviously up in Michigan and Flint had the whole water problem. Are they where they had like lead in the water? Are they putting like steroids in your water up there? <laughs> like, what are they doing with that offensive line? Uh, I, I don't know, man. It's crazy. I, I, we're just homegrown guys. Um, you know, Garrett is, you know, we've been playing football since flag football. So it was crazy. You know, we, each level we'd go up and then um, sixth, seventh grade, we had two teams for our school and then they separated us. And I didn't get to play with him anymore till high school. But uh, it was it was cool to experience that with them. Yeah, I feel like in grade school, that just would have been unfair. Yeah. They're oh, power brain house, damage. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so um, this is Eric, by the way. I'm the producer. Um, <laughs> if, if, you, if you forgot. Um, In case you forgot. Yeah, just, just to make sure. Um, speaking on recruiting, um, you made it pretty apparent that you were talking to Quentin Nelson while you were being recruited. Um, how important was talking to a guy like him to your, like, your decision to come to Notre Dame? Oh, well, dude, he's like my idol, man. Like He's the best offensive lineman in the league and probably will ever be. Um, you know, he's bold claim, but I like it. His name, Quentin Nelson. And, you know, the way he plays with his mentality, you know, that's what I try to simulate because he does everything almost perfect. And, um, you know, to talk to him on why he chose Notre Dame instead of the other schools um, was in the same position as me. So I, me and him were going in the same, you know, situation that he did, you know, five years prior to me. Um, that's pretty, you know, pretty cool to do. And now he's in the NFL as one of the best to ever play. Um, so to get why he went to Notre Dame and, you know, the things that he did and, you know, what he would have done differently with other schools and why Notre Dame was so special and why he chose such a great school, you know, really helped me, you know, push to Notre Dame even more. Yeah. So have you ever seen the videos of Quentin? I'm sure you have Quentin Nelson pulling and him screaming. I, I've seen oh, like pull, but I've never seen the screen it's part. Terrifying. There was he was mic'd up for a game, and every time he would pull, just this like from the depths of hell scream as he was coming around. <laughs> you need to start picking that up. If you ever are mic'd up, I don't know if they're doing mics in college. If you ever mic'd up, we need to see that out of you. We'll get you mic'd up at Notre Dame. Exactly. I, I got mic'd up before um <laughs> Insta I got I got mic'd up by uh in the it's on my Instagram thing. Um I'm go check it out. Yeah, hey, I I'm not really a screamer, but I'm more of like a grunter. Um, yeah. I don't know if I should be mic'd up. I, I swear a lot and stuff like it's that. Okay. But, <laughs> but it no, it's, it's all good. Yeah. So I am curious. Have you thought about what number you want to wear at Notre Dame? I'm wearing 50. Okay. Oh, okay. Nice. I was curious. Do you know 56 is available? I was just curious. Uh, I think <laughs> it might be, but I, I'm not going to wear Quentin Nelson's number. You know, that's his number. And, you know, it's time I create my own path with 50. Absolutely. Is there a story yeah. behind 50? Really, is what happened was, you know, I was in driver's training class and there was number 92 and 50 left on our whole team because okay. I had a pretty big freshman year. And I was I wanted to wear 92 because, you know, my dad wore 92 in the NFL. And I was like, you know, 92, I'll, I'll be that. And the coach said, listen, he's like, you're we have to do an offensive number. So, you know, what other number do you want? And it was, I think there was one more number. It was like a 68. Yeah. And I was like. 50, that's just, 68, that just screams bad. or 90, or no, the 50 or 68. And I was like, well, I guess like I'm just going to go with 50 then. Yep. And after my freshman year, I had a great freshman year. And the numbers came back again the following year. And there's a bunch of them open and everything. And I was like, you know, I'll stick with 50 throughout my four years. I'm like, I had a pretty good first year and, you know, I'll just carry it out. And then soon enough, you know, I got it retired. So, you know, I would say the number chose me. I didn't choose the number. Yeah. So in case you forgot again, Eric's over there in the corner and uh, he's got another question for you about Harry Heastand. Yeah. So I'm just curious. Um, so obviously you talk about Quentin Nelson and obviously Notre Dame's put out some really good offensive linemen, but um, mo recently the, most of them have been produced by like obviously coach Heastand and obviously he left and you were more recruited by coach Quinn. Um, yeah. So a lot of fans were like, Oh yeah. You know, coach Quinn isn't actually the best guy for the job. He's just Kelly's friend. And after seeing like the offensive line play this year and talking to him, can you say like most of that can be put to rest or. Yeah, I believe you can put it to rest now. Um, if you look as, as, at what he did at Buffalo, Cincinnati Central, he's developed two and three stars. You know, he hasn't actually got yep. a four, 
five-star guys, and he's developing those guys in the first, second-round draft picks. Um, you know, compared to other coaches, yeah, coaches from Ohio State, Michigan, they they might get, you know, the four and five stars. They might develop one or two of them um, while Coach Quinn's getting two and three stars, and he's still, you know, getting them into the NFL. And, you know, now that Coach Quinn's been there for two, three years, now he has his understanding. He's got his guys that, you know, from scratch, now he can, you know, develop them into what they are right now. So I was just scrolling through your Instagram trying to find – that mic'd up video. And I came across a picture that you posted of you playing D line with uh, Delhi, which you've posted many times about how you guys are like a brother and you post on uh, Twitter. The guys are a package deal. We'll get to that in a second, but what made you uh, play O line as opposed to D line in college? Um, I love D line so much. Um, you know, my dad played it. Um, you know, it's in my blood. Um, it's my DNA pretty much, but you know, looking big picture here in the future, you know, Defense linemen don't really last that long. My dad played 10 years, but, you know, he had many surgeries as a defense lineman. Um, More Notre Dame guys, too. After that Ronnie Stanley check that he just got, I don't blame you. Exactly. So offensive linemen, I would say, last a lot longer from high school all the way up to hopefully the NFL. I believe, you know, I have a better shot there, um, you know, to stay healthy, but also have a, you know, a long career. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I just saw, too, when Matt was throwing through your Instagram, a picture of you at Penn State when you were on your visit with a visor on your helmet. Are you planning on wearing a visor? Because I don't know if I've ever seen an offensive lineman with a visor. Or was that just for the looks for the photo shoot? It it was for the looks, but I don't know, man. I I liked it, too. But we'll see what happens. You know, I might be that. I I was thinking about bringing back the neck pad. Yes. 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 I was thinking about bringing that back. Um, Neck pad, visor. Oh. That would be the, yep. the strangest like, combination ever, but it would be that would be yours. Yes, you like, own you that. Trademark, it's like trademark that. Trademark combination when you're like making your character. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. Okay, I actually have a question about Madden. So I'm not sure if there's a way that you can like player lock um, a lineman when you're playing just like an exhibition game. But if there is a way, do you do it? Do you just play as a lineman? I don't play as a lineman. That'd be all time football guy movie. That is a big football guy move. If I could figure out a way how I can get my guy to pull and pick up a block, (laughs) yeah, I'd do that. But like, there's no way. So what I do is I put an offensive lineman. I make him like seven foot tall, 350 pounds (laughs) at the quarterback position, and I'm like, this is my lineman. But time the lineman gets the ball, let's go, and then he trucks through guys. So that's up for the lineman out there. Exactly, man. Another two. Another Madden question when you do fantasy drafts, do you just draft Quentin Nelson, like every good offensive lineman and just load your team with O linemen? Why, why not? <laughs> <laughs> they're, the, they're the real athletes on the field. Agreed. Exactly. Cause you look at the bears and they suck because they have a terrible O line. So you are now seeing how important well, they are. There's some more problems there too. <laughs> yeah. A lot of problems <laughs> yeah. there, but more, it's more than just the offensive line. You have Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. So, yeah, so if you ever want to get drafted to the bears, I'll buy your Jersey. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yeah, actually, next year, I know Notre Dame doesn't do a ton of jerseys, but we need to grab mm-hmm. some Rocco Spindler jerseys. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You could just, I'm, I'm all in for it. You could just give us a game-worn one and we'll hang it. That or is true. That. <laughs> or that. I can do that, too. Eric and I uh, are actually waiting. to Next Wednesday, we hear back from Notre Dame from admissions, so we might end up on campus with you as well. Hey, man, that's perfect, man. I just exactly. got to accept myself, so hopefully you guys get in. Appreciate and, it. Uh, we do more of these podcasts. Yeah. So Rocco, like we said, man, we're sure you're super busy, super, super busy schedule. You got a lot going on, especially as you're preparing to go over to Notre Dame. Really appreciate you taking some time out of your day. It was yeah, awesome. Appreciate man. it, Rocco, yeah, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. This was Can't awesome. wait to get you back on. Absolutely. You'll be coming yeah. back. Go yeah. Irish. Go, go Irish, Irish, man. Yeah.